Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking into the Maytech F722 flight controller which is specifically designed for fixed wings and to run iNav. I got this flight controller from Banggood and at the time of publishing this video from the China warehouse it's around $50 delivered. You can get it from also the USA and UK warehouses. It's about an extra $10 for those but I would recommend you get it from the more local warehouse for you as you'll save a lot of time on shipping and also you won't run the risk of getting hit by customs charges when it enters the country. I'll drop a link in the video description below. In this video we'll take a look at the features of this flight controller. We're going to look at the wiring and how we connect and where we connect everything. We're also going to look at voltage configuration because this flight controller has multiple BECs and you can adjust the voltage on most of them. We'll take a quick look at the configuration of this board in my Talon GT and then I'll summarize with a review and give you what I think are the positives and negatives to purchasing this flight controller. To start with we're going to have a look at some of the features on this flight controller. The first one is that it has a built-in OSD. This means that when you open your iNav configurator you're able to fully configure an OSD which will display on your goggles when you're flying. The second feature is that this has four built-in BECs with switchable voltage. This is something you wouldn't even expect to see in one of the higher end flight controllers such as the Vector or the MyFly Dream. The next feature is that this has a built-in camera switcher. This is something I've never seen on any other flight controller before. It's so easy to do, you simply plug in two cameras and configure a switch and then you can toggle between the two cameras during your flight. Another of this board's features is that it comes with a 132 amp current sensor which it claims is high accuracy. So far during my testing i found that it is definitely a lot more accurate than any other board I have used for iNav. Another feature that makes this board slightly different to some of the others is there are enough pads to be able to solder on two ESCs. So for those people that are flying with two motors on their fixed wing then they don't have to try and solder everything onto the same pad. It just makes installation slightly easier. My last item on this list is that the board comes with iNav pre-installed. This means that you get all of the basic features that you expect of an autopilot such as automated flight modes and anything else that is on the most recent version of iNav. I do recommend that when you receive the board that you do update to the latest stable version of iNav rather than what is pre-installed. So before we get started with the wiring we'll have a quick look and see what's included in the package. So you get this middle board which basically has all of the electronics on it. The other two boards don't have any electronics on them at all. In fact they just seem to sandwich the other one and maybe protect it. This one on the left is the bottom piece. Uh, this has some useful information about the BECs and also about the iNav target for this board when you're installing the firmware. The other board here goes on the top but it also does contain some useful information. It identifies the pins on the board and what they're used for. As you can see the board comes without any pins soldered onto it to start with. It does however come with these nice colour coordinated pins. Next we're going to take a look at the wiring and we're going to do this in the flight controller's user guide. This is available online, but just to make it easier for you, I will post a link to this in the video description below. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work our way around this board. We're going to look at these connectors along the top. We'll look down the left-hand side and then work our way along the bottom. The first one is these two pads here. These plus and minus is where you connect the battery. So here you'll probably solder on a cable with an XT60. The next pads along here, these are the plus and minus for your two ESCs which connect to your two motors. Now obviously if you're only using one motor like I am on the Talon GT, you just need to solder onto one of the minus pads and one of the plus pads and it doesn't really matter which one you use. Just below these ESC pads here, you have the signal cable for the speed controllers. Now these have a ground, an N and a signal and that is times two. So this one, S7, is the signal cable for your first motor and S8 is the signal cable for your second motor. You also connect the black cable, the ground, to these two but the N in the middle I believe is just a blank neutral pad that doesn't go anywhere. If you're only using one motor you use this one here, ground and signal seven. 
Moving on to the left hand side here, the first row we have is for an airspeed sensor if you're going to be using one. I haven't currently got one um, for this board, mostly because I can't seem to find one that is at a reasonable price. Um, so I'm going to see how I get on without that for now. But if you do have one, it can be digital or analog, and you can connect it here using the signal, provide it with 5 volt and the ground. The next row is for your buzzer. So you have the signal, 5 volt, and again the ground. This next row here is if you want to connect an LED. Again, you have a signal, a 5 volt, and a ground. In this next block here, you have the SCR and the SDA. These you would use if you have a GPS receiver that requires them. You also have the RSSI pin in this block. Uh, this you can connect a physical cable to your receiver. Uh, in my case, I'm not using this um, because I'm using SBUS on a FreeSky receiver and that sends the RSSI signal down channel 16, I believe. This is something you can configure in uh, the iNav configurator. Down this next block here, you have some UARTs. So you've got um, one, two, and three, these rows. Now the default for this row here, which is uh, UART3, is for a GPS receiver. So in this case, I have connected the ground and the power cable of my GPS receiver to these two pins here. And then the TX on your GPS connects to the RX3 on the board, and your RX on the GPS receiver goes to the TX3 on the board, not the other way around. So the default for UART2 is for your receiver. So I have connected my FreeSky XM Plus receiver. And for that, all I've used is the ground, the 5 volt, and also the RX pin. OK, moving on to the bottom row. These are all of your servo pins. So you have servos 1 to 6 here. You'll notice that the voltage is not giving you a number like it did on the previous section. So this is voltage X. Now voltage X by default, as it shows you up here in the top right corner, is 5 volt. So if you want 5 volt to be supplied to your server rail, you don't need to do anything here. But as you can see here, you do have the options to switch your VX to 6 volt or 7.2 volt. Now the way you do that is you simply bridge pads on the board here as displayed in the picture. So if you want voltage X to be 6 volt, you simply need to bridge these two pads here and here. So just drop a little bit of solder over that. If you want voltage X down here to become 7.2 volts, you just need to bridge these two pads here. Moving on to the next section here, again you have further UARTs. Uh, I'm not going to go any more details on those. And then this section here, the final block, this is for your video gear. So you've got the option along the bottom here, you have your VTX, so this is the signal pin. You've got a 9 volt power supply, and you've got a ground. So this is where you'd plug the servo connector for your VTX. Don't worry too much about the voltage for now, we'll come back to that in a second. And then here you've got camera 1 and camera 2. So camera 1, you plug the signal cable here, the red voltage cable here, and then the ground in this one here. As it is as default, camera 1 and your VTX will receive 9 volt power supply. If you wish, you can switch that 9 volts to 12 volts, and that is this pad just here. So if you were to solder them like this, just to bridge the two pads, you would rise 9 volts to 12 volts. What you can also do is if you've got something, for, for example, a camera that only runs on 5 volts, you can simply take out the red cable and you can plug it into this 5 volt pin down here. Finally, you have a second camera here and you also have voltage SW here. So voltage SW is also configurable. If you want it to be 9 volt, you bridge the middle pad and the top one. But if you want it to be 5 volt, you bridge 
the middle pad and the bottom one. So if you do connect two cameras, so if you've got one plugged into this row here and then another one plugged into this row here, you can simply go into your iNav configurator and I believe it is down here. Um, and basically it shows you here how to use the camera switcher. So by default, if you don't set anything in iNav, it will use camera one and camera one will be on. If you want to be able to use camera two, you need to go into your modes in the configurator and what you need to do is you need to set user two on a channel and a switch and then whatever switch you configure this to, one position will be camera one and the other position will be camera two. Something else you should do when configuring this in iNav is you should go to the current sensor section and set this scale the output voltage to 250. This is in order to make sure that the reading for your milliamp usage is accurate. So because I want to keep this video kind of short and to the point, I don't want to go into any more detail about the configuration here. If you do have any more questions, please drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Now that we've taken a look into the theory of wiring, I'm just going to show you how I've configured my board. Firstly, as you can see, I haven't soldered all of the pins on. I've just soldered the ones on that I think I'm going to use. This might not be the best option, to be honest with you, because if I do now want to expand to use more of the options on this board, I'm going to have to take it out and do some more soldering. So that's just something to consider when you start out. So these pins here at the bottom are the ones that are soldered onto the UARTs, which I'm going to use. So I'm actually only going to use UART 3 and UART 2. So this row here is going to be the four pins for my GPS receiver. And then I'm going to plug my FreeSky XM Plus receiver into these three pins here. This group of pins here are for the four servos I want to connect to this board. On my Talon GT, this is two aileron servos, and then also the two at the rear of the plane for the elevator and rudder. Because I want voltage X to be 5 volt for my servos, I haven't bridged any of these pads on this section of the board. These pins I've told it on here for the video gear. I'm actually only going to use one camera to start with, but I did solder the pins on just in case I want to add a second one later on. In order to provide my video gear with 12 volts of power, I did bridge these two pads with solder. For voltage SW, I haven't actually bridged any of the pads yet, as I'm not too sure what camera I'm going to add at a later date. Once I know the voltage for that camera, then I can bridge those pads later. Over here on the left, I've soldered on the battery here, the ESC here, and also the ESC signal cable here. Zooming out like this gives you a better view of those connections. With the Talon GT, this ESC came with a really long cable with the XT60 on the end. All I did was simply cut it in half, or at the right length, and then solder it onto the board. When I was connecting the signal cable from the ESC, I did disconnect this red cable here, because we don't require the ESC's built-in back to provide power to the board. Okay, so here is the flight controller installed in my Talon GT. I have used a 3D printed tray, which I found on Thingiverse. I'll pop a link in the video description for anyone that's interested in that. Um, looking at these servo pins along here, so servo one is the right aileron, which is this cable here, plugged into that. The next one, servo two, goes out to the aileron on the left wing. And then the next two are for the servos in the tail for the elevator and rudder. So the one to the right hand side of the plane, this goes up to this servo. And the one on the left hand side of the plane goes out to the servo. Next here we have the video gear. So this is my video transmitter. This is out on the wing. So this goes up to here and connects to the video transmitter out underneath there. The one behind it is the camera and that simply is a cable that runs right to the nose of the plane here where the FPV camera is installed. So this board does have built-in filtering for the video gear. This is the first time I have not added my own LC filter and I have to say that the video feed is crystal clear without one so it's obviously doing a good job and it just it feels really nice and convenient just to plug everything straight into the board without having to add anything else in between. 
Moving towards the back here, there is the signal cable from the speed controller. And just a reminder that I have disconnected the red cable. The back here, we also have where I connected the cables for the XT60, where we connect the battery. I've looped that underneath the board for the flight controller, just to make it, well, just to keep it neat and tidy and to keep it out of the way. And then at the back here, you have the ESC is soldered on just to these two. Finally, we have these here. So I hadn't got a four pin connector for my GPS. So what I did was I used a three pin for these three connections here. And then this is just single cable. I just put a bit of heat shrink around it to protect it. Um, and that's where my GPS is plugged in. Okay, and the final connection here, this is my S-Bus receiver. So the receiver is out on the right wing on this aircraft. So this is a servo cable that goes up to here. For the final part of this video, I'm gonna give my review of this flight controller and tell you what I think are the positives and negatives. Starting off with the positive points, my first item on the list is that you get a full autopilot specifically for fixed wing for around $50 or less. Previously, I would have been spending four times this. It just makes the hobby so much more affordable. My second point is that you have built-in switchable BECs. This makes life so much easier without having to install any external BECs. And it also just makes the board a lot more flexible to accept whatever voltage cameras, video transmitters, or servos you're running on your aircraft. My third point is that you have a current sensor that's actually accurate. Previously, when I've been running uh, the F4 flight controller, I found it really hard to get an accurate reading on my current sensor. Point four is that you have a built-in camera switcher. Again, this is something you wouldn't even see on a premium autopilot. This also makes life easier if you do want to add multiple cameras as it's all contained in the one board. Point number five is that the design on this is well thought out. I like the idea of the protective plates that have the information and label the pins for you. And also a big thing for me was the upwards facing USB. This makes it so much easier for you to connect your flight controller to your computer with the USB cable once it's already installed in the aircraft. Previously on other boards with the sideways facing USB, once it's installed into the aircraft, you, you can't plug the USB in or you might even have to remove the board just to connect it to the computer. This might happen more often than you think as well because you want to make small changes in INAV. Point six is colour coded pins. This may sound like a really small thing, but it does make it so much easier when you're connecting all your servo cables to the board. It also means you're less likely to plug one the wrong way around. Point seven is soldering pads for more than one motor, which just means that it'd be a lot cleaner install if you have two motors running on your fixed wing. And point eight is that you have multiple UART slots. You're not gonna go short in this area. Moving on to the negative points of this flight controller. Now, to be honest with you, I don't actually have anything negative to say about this, but I do have points that I would say worth consideration if you are looking into purchasing this. So we'll go through those. So my first point is that it doesn't come with a GPS receiver as standard. And to get the best use of this flight controller and iNav, you're probably gonna need a GPS receiver. Now, they're not very expensive, and I will put a link in the video description to the one I use, it's only $15 and it works really, really well. The second point on my list is something that I mentioned earlier, and that's that it doesn't come with an airspeed sensor. I haven't yet purchased an airspeed sensor for mine because I can't find one at what I think is a reasonable cost. Some people will feel like an airspeed sensor is essential, whereas others will quite happily fly without one. The third point on my list is INAV complexity. Now, if you're kind of new to the hobby, uh, this might be a little bit off-putting because there are so many settings in comparison to the kind of off-the-shelf premium autopilots. Now, for some people, this might be ideal because they like to tweak as many settings as possible. So this is really personal preference. The final point on this list is that you can't install ArduPilot on this board. So if that's something that you were hoping to install, this flight controller is not for you. In summary, I think that this is probably the best low cost flight controller that is available. It's packed with so many features, and if you're happy to deal with the complexity of iNav, this really can't be beaten. Thanks for watching, and please post any questions in the comments below.